Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation. Now I call these equations interesting because I don't think you can find them anywhere else, especially when I check uh, through the literature. I've looked at so many different books on complex numbers. You don't find these equations. Maybe some of them have it and if they do, please let me know because I'm always looking for problems. And if you wanted to suggest, uh, you're my guest, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to suggest problems in the comment section or you can use the form uh, which I don't, uh, haven't looked at recently, I apologize. Okay, I'm going to check it first chance. So we have this equation e to the power 5z equals negative 1 to the power i. An imaginary power of a negative number, how crazy can that get, right? And we have an exponential on the left hand side. So we're solving for z because that's the only variable. In the previous problem, if you remember, we solved for theta. We used different methods. I think that was an interesting problem too. If you haven't checked it, please go ahead and check it out. And also, if you're new to complex numbers, you're kind of, or you need a refresher, go ahead and check out my lecture videos and pretty much all the videos in these series. Okay, so we have this equation e to the power 5z is equal to negative 1 to the power. How do we solve for z? Easy, right? It's like easy. If I had e to the z, that would be awesome. But just L on both sides, right? A lot of times people are, oh, that's easy. I just L on both sides. And then bring these to the front. 5z, L and e is 1, so don't worry about it. i times L and negative 1. And then divide both sides by 5 and case closed. That's it, right? Well, it's not that simple. First of all, what is L and negative 1, right? And that's a good question, right? So we'll talk about that. I want to turn this into another form first and then solve it. And then maybe we can get back here. If I don't forget, I'm very forgetful, by the way. You probably know. I will try to pick it up from here because this has a meaning too, right? Doesn't it? I mean, this should work somehow. But let's go with the first approach first. And my first approach would be to write the right hand side as an exponential e to the power something. You know why? Because it's so powerful, pun intended, right? Okay, we, we're going to write it as a power of e. So here's how, how we can do that. We have negative 1, and I think we've done it in a recent video. I believe it was um, two days ago when we had the negative 1 to the power z, right? Remember that problem? If you haven't seen it, also make sure to watch that video. I think it was an interesting problem. Anyways, let's continue with the problem. So in that video, we've done this, so I'm not going to repeat the process again, but negative 1 can be written as e to the power i pi. But instead of writing just pi, because that's the principal value or the principal argument, we can just add 2 pi n, where n is an integer that represents multiples of 2 pi. Add it because that's our period. Make sense? Okay, cool. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to plug it in. What do we have? We have e to the power 5z equals negative 1 to the power i. This, this would be interesting if instead of z if I use the g, like a 5g. Do we have 5g? Was it 4, 4, 4g internet? I don't know. Something like that. Anyways, let's uh, stick to the material. We have e to the 5z equals that. And now we're going to replace negative 1 with this beautiful thing. Don't you love that? I mean, just awesome, right? Math is awesome. So now let's go ahead and do it. e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n and then we're going to raise it to the power z. But that's just equivalent to multiplying the exponent by z. That's easy, right? Just do that. See how cool that is? Now, here's the fun part. Wait a minute. I think I messed up. I was supposed to raise it to the power i. Sorry about that. I got stuck with this. I don't know why. I got stuck there. It's supposed to be i, not z. So I'm going to multiply by another i. Let me make that i blue. Kind of like blue-eyed. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So the yellow i and the blue i clash and they produce negative 1. You hopefully knew that, right? I mean, i squared is negative 1. That's one thing that you should never ever forget. When I learned complex numbers, my, my teacher told me, if you forget everything, that's okay, but don't forget i squared equals negative 1 because that's super helpful. So from here, we get a negative. Hmm, that's interesting. I get e to the power 5z equals e to the power negative 1 times pi plus 2 pi n. Hmm. That is interesting. I wasn't expecting this. Well, this looks like a real number, doesn't it? Yes, the i disappeared. So there's a couple different ways to dis make i disappear. Multiply by i or multiply by 
negative i. You get the idea. Okay, idea. So now uh, we can natural log both sides and to keep a long story short, I know I kept it too long. We get 5z from here equals negative 1 times pi plus 2 pi n. Awesome. And then you divide both sides by, I was going to say z, but why would you do that, right? That's crazy. Z. Uh, I would divide by 5, and that would give me negative 1 times pi plus 2 pi n divided by 5. And guess what? n is an integer. This should give you all the solutions. But let's look at some special solutions because this is too gen uh, generic, right? So, for example, if n is equal to 0, z is going to be negative pi over 5. How awesome is that, right? I mean, we got negative 36 degrees. Is that right? So, in other words, I'm trying to say if you replace z with that, you should get negative 1 to the power i. Is that correct? Well, hopefully it's going to work. I mean, you can try to plug it in. e to the power 5 times this should equal this. And then these two are going to cancel out. You're going to get e to the negative pi. And then this should equal that. Right? You can go ahead and check it out. I'm not going to do it for you. You need to do it for yourself. But that's one of the values. What happens if n is equal to something else? Such as, that's it. this is my favorite. And you know why? This is why I picked... 5z. I, I, I know I remember. Okay, so if n is equal to, are you ready? If n is equal to 2, ta-da, you get z equals negative 1 times 4 pi plus pi, which is 5 pi, divided by 5. Yay, I get z equals negative pi. Or pi, because it's the same thing, right? Wait a minute. Does pi work? You can plug it in and test it out. All right? Make sense? Okay. Great. So, I remembered. We're going to go back to the ln expression and see if we can take it from there. And we're going to talk about the natural log of a complex number or the complex logarithm. So, for that purpose, should I just erase this area because I'm too lazy and I don't want to write all of these again. So, I'm just going to clear this area. Hopefully, you, you don't mind. And let's go ahead and see if we can uh, work here. Okay, now, what am I going to do? I'm going to take it from here, and I also want to erase this. Just, uh, you can blame it on OCD. And now we have the following. Now, how do you proceed with that? What is the ln of a number, especially a negative number? Because as you know, in the real number world, uh, logs of negative numbers are not defined. Remember the graph of... Uh, ln x, it looks like this, it does not accept negative numbers. It doesn't even accept zero, and even the complex world doesn't accept zero. Zero is just outed, whatever. So to find the uh, log or natural log of a complex number, let's go ahead and call this number w because I already use z there. I would just define it as follows, ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. That's what it is, because if you write in polar form and ln it, that's what you're going to get. So ln of negative 1, in this sense, is going to be ln of the absolute value of negative 1, plus i times the argument. Argument is just going to be pi plus 2 pi n. But if you want to stick to a simpler form, you will just go with pi. Let's just go with pi for simplicity sake, whatever that means. Now, this is positive 1, uh-oh, and ln 1 is 0. This is a real valued ln, so don't worry, about, uh, don't forget about it. So ln of negative 1 is just going to be i pi. Oh, wow, it was that easy? ln of negative 1 is just a multiple of i and pi. So if you plug it in here, you're going to get i times i pi over 5. i squared is going to be negative 1. And that's going to give you negative pi over 5 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.